What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and I'm joined by Tyler, and we are back for another video in our Pirates of the Caribbean community series, this time reviewing Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. So this is, you know, the end of the month. We had talked about Davy Jones' locker, and we've been kind of going in uh, in sequential order of Pirates 1, 2, 3. Next month, we're going to be doing a lot of things with Pirates 4, uh, in, including an official rewriting of the story, how we would change things to make it better, as well as reviewing on Stranger Ties. I'm sure Tyler is going to really love to do that. I'm sure quite a few of you will, will like to see that. So uh, make sure, again, our Avengers community series has been going on for a little while at this point. So make sure you continue to check out those videos. Those come out every Thursday at noon. So, you know, cross over, see what we have to say about there, leave your comments, and of course, leave your comments and suggestions of any future Pirates of the Caribbean videos that you want us to do. We are always listening, and we have several of your suggestions kind of on backlog that we are going to get to right after we're done with the On Stranger Tide stuff okay so at world's end my favorite film of all time it's my favorite pirates movie it's my favorite film there's a lot to talk about in this movie so we're, we're going to hand it over to tyler first tyler first question i want to ask is kind of the continuation of what we talked about at the dead man's chest review dead man's chest ended pirates of the caribbean in a way that not a lot of people expected i don't think anybody expected it and it left a lot of things open and a lot of things needed to be done in pirates 3 there was a lot they needed to accomplish in pirates 3 to wrap up several stories getting jack back how are they going to beat davy jones what happens with beckett all these questions how did you think they did with the with what they left pirates 2 on i think they did like uh with the ending of two, it seemed impossible for there to even be like, you know, almost anything for them to go on. Uh, Jack's dad, the bad guy Barbosa, uh, is now on the good guy. Like, how did he come back? Um, why is he on the good good guy side? Um, Davy Jones' heart is with the other bad guy, and it's like there was a lot of things. And like you said, like they had a lot of things to cover. But it was kind of like, how are you even going to go about like doing this? And what do you mean, bring Jack back? How? Um, but, you know, they did all of it, and they pulled all of it off, and I think they did an amazing job. Um, you know, what we talked about last time uh, with Davy Jones' locker, like the way that they did that, they pulled that off so well. That was one of the coolest things in all three Pirates of the Caribbean movies, like that trilogy, um, for the 100%. How they held, oh, sorry, what they did with Barbosa's character in three, how he is like very, um, you know, we don't really see him as a villain anymore. He's very knowledgeable. He knows all these things, like how to get into the locker. Um, he knows a lot about like the past. He knows a lot about um, Davy Jones or the brother in court and all that kind of thing. Calypso, like he's he's the way that they introduce all of these elements that they didn't never even established before like the brother in court what the heck's the brother in court um all like all of that kind of stuff um barbosa was like the tool that they used to you know introduce it and that, that was a really great job and it made sense that it would be him too um so that was really great how elizabeth as a character how she grows so well as a character, just and she becomes one that I actually end up liking. Um, Will I still? I have a problem with what they did because I still see. I still don't like Will because of what he does in three. Even though I know the whole, he was like a double agent, it, but how he acts sticks out in my brain. Like he's a he's basically like a jerk. I don't. I just don't like how he basically is like an antihero in three. Um, I don't know. I, I actually do like that he was like a double agent and stuff when I remember it. But for whatever reason, because maybe it's because that happens so far at the end. And the way that they kind of tell you where it's like, well, maybe Jack does know what he's doing. It's like, oh, wait, you so you're a good guy the whole time. Oh, But it's been like two hours. It's like a three-hour movie. So I think it's because of that that I kind of forget that he was, you know, playing the other side. Um, but, you know... Having said that, remembering that point that he is a double agent, I do kind of like that. Like he was kind of like undercover. That was pretty cool. Uh, you know, seeing the whole like I mentioned the, the locker, but seeing how like not exactly how, but seeing like what that realm was like, um, seeing all the dead people under the sea and all that stuff. Basically, seeing what Davy Jones sees almost all the time. Um, it's not that great of a place. It, he's basically in his own hell. 
um, ironically, he, he, you know, he had Dave, or he had, uh, sorry, he had Jack Sparrow in his, you know, either personal hell or just basically that hellish sandy prison with whatever with the ship, so he can't do anything. Uh, but really, he also being under there with his crew and all that stuff. Really, he's in hell, his own hell. He's he's almost in his own locker, um, his whole life for years, hundreds of years probably. So um, you know that's kind of sad. <laughs> but um, you know how they show all that stuff, how they establish or tell us, you know, like uh, Calypso and Davy Jones, like their whole relationship and what happened with them, and when. Uh, Davy Jones finally interacts with who we find out to be Calypso was Tia Dalma when they interact and she touches him and he turns back human. You see that human side of him, uh, but you know how he goes to choke her after and then his claw gets stuck and it's like, and he's like upset by the creation, like by what he's become. Uh, but then he kind of like realizes like, well, wait, it's the person right in front of me that has caused me uh, to look and be this way. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then showing like his ghostly abilities, you know, going through like, that was pretty cool to see him, you know, coming out or even towards the final battle when, um, when Jack's way up top on one of the like sails. And then Davy Jones, like kind of like comes out of the ship, like just so many things that they did in that movie were so cool. That final fight with like assembling, all like this whole pirate army that they you know there's hundreds of them then there's like hundreds like tons and tons of the british navy and the final confrontation and the storm like everything that they did um was i i couldn't have asked for a better not only like finale for the trilogy um but i couldn't ask for a better pirates of the caribbean movie because i really i do really love two and I really do love three, and it is so hard for me sometimes to decide which one I like more. It really is because two, as we said in the review, the last review, like it takes Pirates one and like it's a big huge leap, but they like they land like they do a great job. But three and two, they are similar, like they're definitely similar, but like three does also so many things like with the lore. There's so much more lore in three. That that's why like I go back and forth like I don't know which one's my favorite. Like right now three is like talking about it three is. But if I was talking about two again two might be I don't know. But that's really great that we can that we can do that or at least for me it's like man you have two from the same franchise that's hard you I can't think of another franchise that I could say that about where I like two movies two movies in a row so much that I don't know which one I like best. They just did so well after two to three like how they cover all that stuff. How they wrap it all up, I I don't know. Uh, hats off to them because I don't know how they did it, but they did so, so well. The film is very, very special. Um, from the very first time I watched it, even now, I've watched this film a ton of times, nearly uncountable amount of times. But every time, you know, a, a new scene becomes my favorite or a new thing, you know, stands out for me. The film has so many special moments. And, you know, it's it's a very split kind of film. And we're going to talk about that. We saw the comment that was saying, like, can we talk about Pirates 3 being very, you know, divisive, like having people hate it but also love it or, you know, uh, uh, half and half and we're going to talk about that in the future after on stranger tides and it's a good point it's a super long movie but for me if there's not an amazing action scene that's unrivaled in film then it's a very strong character development scene or it's a strong lore scene or it's comedy this this movie has some funny parts in, to, in it but it's also got a ton of heart a ton of emotion characters are dying like every 10 minutes like we lose norrington we lose governor swan we lose will at the end we lose david Jones we lose we lose Sal Fang we lose so many people it just keeps on going you know it, it, the, the hits keep on coming we don't know what the future of Jack Sparrow is we don't know what's going to happen uh, to the end of this story you know again a thing that I've always said I wanted to see Davy Jones fight and like Tyler said they give Davy Jones so much in this film they give him a fantastic conclusion with his story with his personality fantastic performance he looks even better we see the emotion on him even more we see his pain we get to see him fight Jack the last you know it's very rare 
films can pull off a literal 35 minute just non-stop fighting scene and that's what that maelstrom scene is it's literally like 30 plus minutes of just action and i cannot think of a film that can do it mainly because pirates 3 at the time was the highest budgeted film of all time so that's that's obviously why they could do it but you know you got the up is down you got the beginning with the extermination of pirates which which i actually always kind of glance over and forget that that is the main beginning of one is the call of the brethren when they're just hanging pirates and then they hang the the little boy who starts who starts singing that's a really powerful opening and uh, and then we get you know elizabeth and and uh in sao fang and singapore and barbosa and that's an epic scene so all throughout this film there is emotion. We get the real Jack, which we'll I'll talk to Tyler about in a second. You know, but you get that throughout the whole film. You get him and Barbosa's relationship, which was started in one, but three is really where it takes off. I think a lot of people, you know, could look to four or even five to see where their relationship has come, but it was really built mainly in three because they have a lot of great scenes together. They have a lot of, you know, character development of who's really the captain. There's even deleted scenes of them fighting over who's the captain. So that's really where we get a strong foundation for those two. But the whole thing, the finale, saying goodbye, they literally all say goodbye to each other. You know, we get the line with Gibbs and Jack of take what you can, give nothing back. That like, that gave me like chills when I saw it because it's like, that's the first thing you hear them say in one when they, they meet each other. So you get that, you get the goodbye on the pearl with Elizabeth about to kiss Jack again. He says, you know, once is quite enough, darling, or whatever he says. So there's so many scenes. So Tyler, before we wrap it up, do you, uh, firstly, any big scenes that stand out or like epic moments or even small like character driven moments. But then also we've talked about it quite a bit, but really quickly, let's talk about uh, Jack Sparrow, who maybe isn't the runaway leader for the best uh, person in this film because Davy Jones and Barbosa are both very, very strong, even Elizabeth. But this is a very different kind of Jack and a Jack that I think solidified your and my love for his character. One of the things, this is about to be a really sick thing that I say, two actually. Um, one of the things that I think stands out most is when Norrington sacrifices himself, um, and is killed by Will Turner's, or basically, and is killed by Bootstrap Bill. And it's like, like the whole, because you're like mad, you're, you're mad, you're not mad at Norrington. And, and the thing about Norrington is like, I didn't like him in one and you're not really supposed to, um, but then in two, like you see how far he's like kind of fallen, and then you're kind of, then you kind of like you know what I actually kind of like this side of him now. When he when he's like kind of with Jack's group, and then when they're all fighting each other, you're like, man, you know what I was right. I know I didn't like him. Um, but then in three, uh, you definitely don't like him because it's like, oh, his status is back. That's why he did it. He wanted to, and I don't I don't blame him. Like I get it. Like that was his life. Like his his position. Like that was his life. So he wanted his life back. Um, so I get it. So, you know, he he did that. He gave it to Beckett and all that stuff. And he got his he got his life back, essentially. But then realized, there's a lot of realizations about who people are and what's really important to them in parts of the Caribbean. And that's not appreciated enough. Like Barbosa, not to jump ahead, but he believed, you know, that treasure and the sea and all that stuff is what uh, was the most important to him. But then in the fifth movie, he finds out, no, actually, it was his daughter that he wasn't he wasn't part of her life. But it's his daughter that was the most important thing. That was his treasure. Where uh, the connection for Norrington is he believed that his position, like his job, is what was the most important thing to him. But then, you know, as, as the movies go on and stuff, he realizes that it's actually not. It was actually the people that he cares about, like Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth's father. Like those people who who is dead, um, but it's those people that actually um, are the things that are most important to him, um, and they were worth sacrificing himself for. Just like Barbosa sacrificed himself for his daughter, Norrington sacri- sacrifice. Sorry, Norrington sacrificed himself so that Elizabeth and Jack and all them could get away, so that they could later defeat Davy Jones and Beckett. Um, so I actually really. I like that part. I don't. I see. I don't like that part, but I like that part. I like that part because of what he does, um, where you think he's going with them, but then he cuts the rope and all that stuff. Um, but then what drives me nuts, and I know we're supposed to because that's the control that um, it's like a hive mind almost. Like that's the control that Davy Jones has 
uh, on his crew members where like bootstrap bill kind of seemed like he had free will for the most part. But then on that scene, after he kind of like dealt with Davy Jones and he kind of, and then if you notice bootstrap bill like changed even more, like he had more stuff on him and all that, like he was becoming more, he was become, sorry, he was becoming even more part of the ship, part of the crew, part of the ship. He had even more like barnacles and stuff on his body. Um, so he was kind of like a zombie and he kept saying it like part of the crew, part of like all that stuff. So, you know, he kept, he, yeah, he kept repeating that line and all that. And then he killed him. And I was like, no, what are you doing? Like, why are you, you, you don't even like Davy Jones. You know what I mean? It's like, you want to stop Davy Jones. So what are you doing? But that's the show. And that's why I don't like it because I feel bad because I actually like Bootstrap Bill. Um, but that's the control that uh and the cruelty basically that Davy Jones has on his crew members. Um so that's one scene that stands out to me. Especially so Norrington's like sacrificial Norrington's sacrifice definitely is something that I remember, something that stands out to me, even more so now seeing what Barbosa did in Pirates Five. The other one that I because I said oh, there's two sick things. The other thing that I really, really like is the almost the very end um, when the Black Pearl and the Flying Dutchman, now controlled by Will Turner, um, both are heading towards... Because when it comes up, you kind of think for a second that they're going to have to face um, Will and the Flying Dutchman. That's, like For whatever reason, like, that's in your head Like at first when you first see it. Because they're all like, like scared, like, uh-oh, now what? Um, but then when, you know, uh, you know, he turns around and he's like smiling or whatever, and they're both going after, um, Beckett's ship. And then when they're, you know, blasting it together and he's just going down the stairs and everything's blown up behind him. Like that's another scene and, and like, you know, uh, cinematography or whatever you want to call it that stands out in my mind so much. Where you know he's just coming down the stairs and it's like boom, 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 boom. It looks so cool, and he's like, "It was just good business." <laughs> or is that what he says? Good business? Yeah, he's like, "It was just good business," and then just the flames just take him. Um, I love that because I hate that guy. I hate Beckett. Um, but that's a great scene, seeing him die like that. How they use Jack in the movie? I actually really like how they use Jack almost throughout the entire movie. Um, Unlike, almost unlike some of, almost all, actually. I think three, he, he's it's the most solid character, or not, sorry. I think At World's End is the most solid, not performance of Johnny Depp. That's not what I'm saying. Like, that Jack Sparrow, like, what he does in three, how he acts, not the crazy part. How he acts, like, after that and all that. I think that's the best Jack Sparrow that we've ever had. Because you, there's so many different ranges of him, but he's still, you know, he's still Jack. But there's so many, like, there, you get a lot of the serious things, like where when Barbosa's talking about the world being smaller, and he says the world's, and Jack says the world's still the same, there's just less in it. But like the way he says it, it's like that's that's one of the other first times in, especially at World's End, where you see like, you know, you almost wonder how much of the craziness is almost like an act. You. And I, I sometimes wonder that because that was the realest Jack I think we've ever seen. That and, the, you know, the rifle part in, in um, Dead Man's Chest. But that scene when he's like, no, you know, the world's still the same. There's just less in it. And it's like, like it's like, yep, he's being completely 100% honest. Uh, and it seems like he doesn't like it at all. And he's he's kind of disappointed in it. Like, it's kind of like... You know, I, we can only do what we've been doing for so long. Like, everything comes to an end. Um, so, sometimes I do wonder how much is... You know, I know he's obviously nuts, clearly. But I do wonder how much of it is kind of like just to have fun. Um, and I think more than we actually think. Uh, then when Will... Because when, when Jack contemplating stabbing the heart, and then when he sees that Will basically is stabbed the look on his face he is so like he in that moment he's you can tell i at least i can in that moment he is so destroyed now there's a lot of you and a lot of people in general 
who think like, well, no, he's upset because he wanted to be the new Davy Jones. I don't think he really did. He just liked to tell himself that because, again, what did he say? The world's not getting smaller. There's just less in it. So another, And what I just said is what he's saying is, you know, like we can only do what we've been doing for so long that, you know, the 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 Navy is taking over the seas a little bit. Like things are changing. The way of the pirate life is changing. So I think that he wanted something uh, almost like a, an excuse to be able to continue doing the lifestyle that he has because he doesn't want to change. Um, so I I truly don't believe he really wanted uh, Davy Jones' job. I really don't, and that's and that's why he asked his father what he thinks about like living forever and that and and living with yourself. That's exactly. That's exactly the thing too with that that scene the where Will or uh, where Jack's about to stab the heart and Will got stabbed and like he like he he like looks at the heart and he's like what is actually important to me is it is it doing the excuse thing where I get to do the charade for a little bit longer before you know the you know the fun runs out basically or do I basically save my friend my friends so i save my friend and let them be together even though it's only going to be once every 10 years they're still going to be together if i stab the heart you know it might actually not even be what i want and now i just kill i let my best friend die not my best friend but i think they actually i think jack and will i think the way that jack sees will i think he does see him as somebody who's super close to him just like gibbs um, because he's been like he he did change Will, just like he in one like how, how I said like Will at the end of the first movie Curse of Black Pearl Will's almost Jack's equal so and I think that's how Jack sees him like you know you know it's almost like he was a mentor for um, Will so I think they are super close at least I, mean, I don't think Will sees Jack as being uh, that close like like I don't think Will thinks of Jack. As somebody who he can like turn to or whatever, but I actually think Jack thinks that of Will. He would never would, but I actually think that Jack thinks that of Will. You know, when he, in that moment, it's kind of like, well, do I want to do this or do I actually want to do the right thing? And he chooses to do the right thing. I love that part, um, and I can't believe that they did that. By the way, uh, I was not expecting them to kill one of those three main characters. Norrington, yeah. Beckett, yeah. Uh, Elizabeth's father, yeah. But never. Well, then again, they did kill Jack Sparrow. But but because of that, I didn't think that they were gonna kill Will or Elizabeth. Uh, it's just different. Um, and they did. But then again, but the way that they did it, they handled it really, really well. Um, so the movie, uh, it's it's hard to you. You really, in my opinion, when you're talking about Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End and you're a fan like us, or even like you guys, it's hard to talk about it when you're reviewing it in only like a couple sentences. Because it does so many things well, and it shows you so many things that, again, like we've never seen. Like literally, like even for characters. Um, that it, that And see, that's why I love it so much. The, the score, by the way, like that's an amazing score. Um, just all around, it's a great movie. I, I forgot about the music too. The music in this film is is the best soundtrack for a film that I've ever heard, and probably the greatest soundtrack for anything. I, I could just listen to the soundtrack, and and you know we've kind of done it, we've experimented. It really does put you into whatever situation they're in. You can you can tell kind of the level of, of where they are just by the music. So the music is beautiful. What they did with Jack Sparrow was incredible. I, I agree with Tyler. Those were some incredible scenes with him. Obviously, the deleted scene of him saying, you know, men aren't cargo, that's a fantastic scene. I, I We've talked about that before. Really should have been in the film. But you still get enough of him. I mean, it's not like you don't get enough of real Jack in the movie. He's all over the place uh, in terms of being uh, like truly a, a passionate person. That stabbing the heart scene, I think that's my personal favorite Jack Sparrow moment when, like Tyler said, the look on his face is basically the look of us 
the audience. We we couldn't believe it. And Jack couldn't believe it. He's like, I didn't think Davy Jones would turn around and stay. Like, I was going to talk to him. But Jack, I think, and I agree with Tyler. I completely agree with Tyler. Jack, I don't think ever at that time was going to stab the heart. When he got it, he was almost kind of positioning himself to talk Davy Jones down again, kind of talk himself out of the situation another time. Because it's like, look, I finally got your heart. It's in my hand, and I have uh, like a blade to it. So now you're going to listen. That's that's kind of what I thought. But then when Davy Jones kills Will, Jack's like, are you kidding me? I was going to like barter with you. Like That's kind of how I thought of it. And then Jack's like, all right, kill, stab the heart, don't stab the head. And, and that was an epic, epic scene. And then um, last thing I do, I want to say personally about the film is just the ending. Like I said, the goodbyes were something. What I found really, really cool about it, obviously there was the ending with Jack uh, and saying goodbye to Gibbs and, and having the whole Barbosa thing and Barbosa sail away from his ship and having Jack, uh, you know, leave on the dinghy, which was a perfect ending, I think. And, a, and we can talk about that in a, in a later video of how they ended that kind of trilogy. But the Will and Elizabeth you know, for how much, you know, Tyler and I have talked about them, and they're not our favorite characters, and in one, like we've said, they're pretty weak characters, but it's just crazy that at the end of three, I personally felt very emotional at that scene when they're on the beach, and they're and they're kissing, like, one last time, and then Will says, like, keep a weather eye on the horizon, which is something you hear him say to her in the beginning of Dead Man's Chest, when he's going to go find Jack. He tells her that before he leaves the jail cell. So to get that line to come back at the very end of three, after this whole adventure has ended, and it's like see ya like we love each other we just got married that marriage scene was a beautiful part of of pirates 3 and it's like i have to go like we spent our day i have to sail see in 10 years and then when when he's walking away and elizabeth kind of like says his name out and she you know it's kind of, she has like emotion to her she sounds like she's almost crying and they kiss like one final time and they have the swords uh, marked in like an x on the in the sand that's a beautiful beautiful ending to those two characters and uh, definitely you know, it's something that the the ending of this movie needed and, and i couldn't have thought of a better way to send those two characters out so that's our personal reviews of pirates of the caribbean at world's end let us know in the comments below what do you guys think i mean obviously we're very passionate about this film in particular but let us know what you guys think where does it stand up in regards to the other pirates movies again make sure you check out our avengers community series it comes out every thursday at noon eastern standard time we're going to be going right along with that until Avengers comes out, uh, as always. And of course, we're going to be having every other week Pirates of the Caribbean content every other Friday at noon. So we'll see you in two weeks for our official rewrite of Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. We'll see you guys there.